Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we'll be taking you through the lush rainforests of Peninsula Malaysia in search for what in my opinion is the most beautiful snake on earth, the blue coral snake. Now, these lush rainforests behind me support a whole range of Asian biodiversity, including some seriously at risk species such as tigers and binturongs. However, this episode we've chosen to focus on something a little more achievable to find and film for you guys. So our main focus for this episode will be the blue coral snake. The blue coral snake is a highly venomous front fanged lapid and one of the most beautiful snakes you will ever see. It is neon blue in colour with a red head and a red tail. It is just absolutely stunning. You guys don't want to miss this, stay tuned. Malaysia consists of two major geographical areas, east and west, which are separated by the South China Sea. In the east lies the island of Borneo, which we plan to cover in an episode in the not too distant future. However, in this episode we are solely focusing on western Malaysia. Because of this separation, there are certain species such as orangutans you won't find on the western side. However, despite this, the western side still has some incredible primate biodiversity and we were fortunate enough to see a number of these incredible animals. While long-tailed macaques may be a common sight throughout Asia, this is not the case for these Salinga silver langurs. Instead, they have a small restricted range on the western coast of Peninsula Malaysia, which made them a welcome sight in our travels. We spent some time observing this large family group and the young orange babies were particularly adorable to witness. We took a small detour to see these beautiful animals in the lowlands before it's time to head inland and climb into the clouds and rain of higher altitudes to begin our search for the blue coral snake. Upon our arrival, and once we gave the weather time to clear, we began to see more primate species as we explored this stunning area of lush rainforest. Unfortunately, the siamangs you heard calling at the start of this episode were always high up and at a great distance to get any decent footage of. However, these dusky langures would thankfully sit out in lower branches to feed, often quite close by. The brutal lacerations to this animal's back are likely evidence of a lucky escape from one of the resident leopards in the area, and a good reminder that we're not in Australia anymore. This area of tropical rainforest we based our search in would vary in altitudes from 350 metres at the base of the mountain to almost 1500 metres at the top, and the temperatures would often reflect this, hovering around 20 degrees Celsius and varying only by a few degrees from day to night. Thick cloud cover would constantly roll in, blanketing the area, making everything constantly cool and moist, and the skies would constantly open up in heavy downpours at almost no notice. But this is the wet season in Asia after all, and this area in particular will see an average rainfall of 2.6 metres each year. November is actually the wettest time of year here, with the monthly rainfall for this month averaging 340 millimetres, which is actually why we chose this month to base our trip. As Dave would say, I bet the rain really gets the blue corals moving. No matter where you are in the world, there's always something breathtaking about immersing yourself in pristine rainforest. All the different sounds and colours along with the warm climate and high rainfall makes these areas rich in life and biodiversity. And it's time for us to get out there and explore as much as possible. Walking trails in some areas proved quite the challenge, such as this collapsed bridge. However, that didn't stop us and we were rewarded with some incredible animals for our efforts.
While the wet and foggy conditions proved to be favourable for the wildlife in the area, particularly that of the reptiles and amphibians, it wasn't always the most pleasant of conditions for us to be in. Clothes would never dry in the brief patches of sunlight we saw, and the damp air often felt much cooler than 20 degrees. Places such as this abandoned building would prove to be a refuge site for mammals such as bats to escape the wet conditions, and while we explored the building we even found evidence of fresh leopard prints through the moss on the floor. Proof that often nature will utilise the spaces we leave behind if they are left without our disturbance. We'd often mix up our search efforts between walking and covering more ground by driving the steep windy roads up and down the mountain. As you can see though, there's ample opportunities for a snake to be just to the side of the road and you could quite easily miss it. Thick vegetation as well as deep foliage meant even a snake as brightly coloured as a blue coral could easily be missed. And as is the case with spotting any wild animal, it's all about being in the right place at the right time. Thankfully, luck happened to be on our side this trip, and after multiple consecutive late nights, we finally saw one, the blue coral snake. I can still remember the first time I ever saw photographs of this species and thought there's no way this thing can be real, surely there has to be some sort of photoshop work going on. But after seeing one in the flesh, I can confirm these snakes truly are this brightly coloured, and if anything, photos and videos don't do them justice. I've truly never seen a more beautiful snake in my life, and it honestly has to be one of the most remarkable colour schemes in the animal kingdom. Not only is the blue coral snake interesting by its fascinating colour scheme, it also contains the longest venom glands of any snake in the world, which extend to over 25% of the length of its body, of which can reach lengths between 5 and 6 feet. This snake was probably around 4 feet long, so that means its venom glands are around 30 centimetres in length, which is just insane. This means it can hold a substantial amount of venom in its body, but it doesn't just stop there. This venom it contains is highly toxic and efficient, a unique cytotoxin that causes almost instant paralysis in its victims by forcing all of the neutrons in your body to fire simultaneously, Imagine feeling like every muscle in your body is going through a spasm cramp all at the exact same time. That's what victims of the blue coral snake can expect to have to endure. The intended victims of the blue coral snake are actually other snakes, and it's assumed that this fast-acting venom is a means to protect the blue coral snake from itself being a victim of other venomous snake bites. If it can immobilize another snake almost instantly, it can itself be spared from a possible dangerous bite while trying to catch a meal. I think the blue coral snake would have to be one of the most fascinating reptiles we have on our planet, and I am so fortunate I was able to witness this incredible species in the wild amongst some great friends. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you next time for some more wildlife adventures.